President, please be seated. Le Président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is back in session. L'audience est reprise. And the floor is given to the co-prosecutors. Je passe la parole au co-procureur. Chilean. Mr. President, Chilean. Your Honours, everyone in Monsieur and around the courtroom. Uh, et toute personne présente It is dans le prétoire et en dehors. On Nous abordons la session thématique the OCP appealed and we have heard the responses from the Kills and Pond Defense Team. Du de and Coupe I would like now to relativement à l'appel de Kills and Pond. Uh, raise my remarks regarding the sentencing Je vais maintenant faire mes the observations the en ce qui concerne la détermination de la peine de l'accusé. Could you hear me, Mr. President? Pouvez-vous m'entendre, Monsieur le Président? Okay. As your honors are aware, Comme the trial savez, chamber held that the maximum sentence that the ECCC ah, may impose, sentences of life imprisonment, most appropriately sanctions the criminal conduct of each of the accused. Uh, the court prosecutors entirely agree, and we ask this chamber to confirm the sentences of life imprisonment. To confirm the peine de reclusion criminelle à perpétuité. I will first briefly address why life imprisonment is the most appropriate sentence for the two accused before responding to the arguments Kiel Sampan raised on appeal in relation to his sentence. As the chamber held in case 001 and as followed by the trial chamber in the case 002-01 judgment, the primary factor to be weighed at sentencing is the gravity of the convicted personal person's crimes. Nguyen Jie and Kiu Samphon have been convicted in case 002-01 of the crimes against humanity of extermination, encompassing murder, political persecution, and other inhuman acts comprising forced transfer attacks against human dignity and enforced disappearances. These are extremely grave crimes in and of themselves, and Nguyen and Kiel Sampan perpetrated them on a broad scale. The trial chamber found that at least 250 Lono officials were murdered at Tuol Po and a minimum of 2 million 330,000 to 2,430,000 people were victims of crimes committed during the first two phases of the forced population movement. As the trial chamber rightly noted, the number of victims is among the highest of any decided case concerning international crimes. Adding to this gravity, these crimes were committed across large portions of Cambodia and have had a lasting impact on direct victims, their families, friends and loved ones and indeed on the entire nation of Cambodia up to and including present day. The gravity of the crimes is further exacerbated by the circumstances in which they were perpetrated. The fact that many of the victims were particularly vulnerable 
including infants, children, the elderly, sick and injured people, evacuated from hospitals and pregnant women who had just given birth. Moreover, the involvement of both Nguyen Chi and Kyo Somphone in perpetrating these crimes was extensive and substantial. Nguyen Chi and Kyo Somphone were among the relatively small group most responsible for the development of the policies that led to these crimes. Your Honours, the judgment properly referred to them as key actors in the formation of the policies. The evidence amply shows that they, they knew the crimes would be committed and were involved in implement, implementing them throughout the period encompassed by case 002-01. The evidence demonstrates that Nguyen Chi was, along with Pol Pot, the ultimate decision maker within the CPK and within the DK regime as it implemented these policies. He was deputy secretary of the party and a member of the standing committee. The evidence also demonstrates that Kyo Somphone was a candidate member and later a full rights member of the Central Committee, a frequent attendee at the Standing Committee meetings and a trusted confidant of Pol Pot. He disseminated, endorsed, and defended the common purpose and policies. He provided encouragement and support to the CPK and utilized his trusted and respected character in that endeavor, thereby facilitating the accomplishment of the crimes and implemented key economic aspects of the common purpose. Both Nguyen Chi and Kyo Somphon abused their positions of authority and influence to accomplish these crimes. And both Nguyen Chi and Kyo Somphon were highly educated and well understood the importance and consequences of their actions. In comparison to this, no mitigating circumstances significant enough to overcome these factors are extant in relation to their individual. Nunji has not challenged his sentence on appeal. May Supreme Court Chamber uphold TC decision. Q. Somphone, however, alleged that the trial chamber committed errors in reaching its determination that a life sentence is appropriate for his crimes. He asks that this chamber impose a fixed term sentence, but does not identify what a, what mixed term sentence is requesting? He is requesting. As we addressed in our response brief to Kyosun Pond's appeal, we submit that the arguments Kyosun Pond raises have no merit and should be dismissed. Kyosun Pond argues that the trial chamber held that he had no actual authority. Kyo Somphon argues that therefore he must have played a limited role in the commission of the crimes and is not deserving of a life sentence. However, Kyo Somphon misrepresents the judgment's findings in this regard. While the judgment finds that some of the positions that Kyo Somphon formally held, such as Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of National Defense, and General Staff of Grung and President of the State Presidium in 1976 had limited authority. That does not mean 
that they were not significant. Cela ne signifie pas que cette autorité n'était pas importante. Judgment notes that along with Hu Yun and Hu Nam, Kyo Zong Pan was the public face of the opposition movement. And through his public statements, ordering execution of seven traitors of Lunno regime, Kyo Zong Pan played an important role in bolstering the legitimacy of the movement. Nor did the trial chamber find that Kyo Sung Fon had a limited role in the CPK itself. Indeed, to the contrary, as an already mentioned, the trial chamber found that Kyo Sung Fon was a candidate member of the Central Committee since 1973 and made a full rights member in 1976. He was a frequent and contributing attendee at standing committee meetings, a leading member of Office 870, and had significant supervisory responsibilities in regards to the Commerce Committee, warehouses and power factories, among other formal and informal roles. These were the positions of authority that he abused, and it was in these capacities that the trial chamber found that Kyo Sung Pan made a significant contribution to the joint criminal enterprise and plan instigated, added, and abetted the crimes at issue. As such, the trial chamber found he was a key actor si la, in la formulating the policies that led to the crimes, knew the crimes would be committed pursuant to those policies, and that his involvement was extensively and substantial. Kyo Sung Fon's arguments that he played a limited role in relation to these crimes are therefore meritless. These arguments simply evade his criminal responsibility. Kyo Sung Fon also argues that his level of education, which the trial chamber found was a aggravating factor for sentencing, has never been contemplated in international law or Cambodian law as an aggravating factor. This is demonstrably false. For instance, the ICTY trial chamber in Benjamin at paragraph 1114 of their judgment held that the accused was an intelligent, university-educated person who knew exactly the import and consequences of his actions. The trial chamber finds that this fact constitutes an aggravating factor. As with Brajanin, the fact that Kyo Sam Phan was highly uh, educated Brajanin, shows that he was fully able to grasp élevé, the nature of his acts and understand their consequences. Kyo Sam Phan also abused that the trial chamber erroneously disregarded evidence of his good character. Mr. President, Your Honor, the trial chamber did not disregard the evidence that Kyo Sung Phan put forward, forward in this regard. Indeed, it considered it and found that Kyo Sung Phan may have been kind to people in specific instances. However, the trial chamber rightfully found that these isolated instances cannot play any significant part in mitigating crimes of the severity of those for which Kyo Sung has been found guilty. 
contre que sympa, ne compte tenu de la gravité to du crime dont il a été déclaré coupable. Any of the mitigating factors have some limited si merit, they are vastly outweighed by the gravity of the crimes and the aggravating circumstances. Similar to this chamber's finding in K001, uh, the outstanding aggravating elements and exceptional magnitude of the crimes for which Kiyosong has been convicted neutralize the limited coupable, impact of this mitigating factor. Furthermore, plus, this chamber also noted in K001 that at the international 001, level, a line of appeal judgments from the ad hoc tribunals confirms that life imprisonment can stand in spite of mitigating factors where the gravity malgré, malgré of the crimes so dictates. Pour autant que la gravité des crimes le commande. Finally, we know enfin, that even if your honors found some part of Q. Zonfon's arguments si regarding, regarding his sentence persuasive, it should not be amended the sentence Kyo of the trial chamber. Peine, il, um, ne cependant pas modifier la peine à lui infliger. This chamber has itself noted the deference that it affords to the trial chamber's determination of sentence and that the party seeking, seeking to have a sentence revised carries a substantial burden in that regard. In the case 001 appeal judgment, this chamber, quoting a decision de of the ICTY hein, Appeals Chamber, held chambre, that the trial chambers are vested with a broad discretion in determining the appropriate sentence, including the determination de of the weight given to mitigating or aggravating circumstances. As a general rule, the appeal chamber will not revise a sentence unless the trial chamber has committed a discernible error in exercising its discretion or has failed to follow the applicable law. Your Honours, we submit that the trial chamber has not committed any errors in these regards. And in any event, Kiesempon has failed to carry his burden so demonstrating. We therefore ask that this chamber affirm the life sentences imposed on Nguyen Chi and Kiesempan by the trial chamber as the only sentences that are proportional to their crimes and that absolutely reflects their culpability. Thank you, Mr. President and Your Honour. Le Président, I now move to the appeal of the co-prosecutors, which is our last uh, semantic session. I would like to hand the floor now to the co-rapporteur to present the report. Judge Momoni Jaria, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like now Monsieur to President. present the report uh, on the co-prosecutor's appeal. Concernant the co-prosecutors co filed an appeal in case 00-01. They request that the Supreme Court le chamber finds that the mode of liability referred to as the third or extended form of joint criminal enterprise, also known as JCE3, is applicable 
applicable in proceedings applicable before the ACCC, both the pre-trial and trial chambers previously found la that JCEC was que le not part of customary international law at the time the crimes were alleged to have been committed and therefore not under the jurisdiction of the ECCC. In the trial judgment, Dans the trial chamber recalled these decisions and on that basis base, decided not to consider JCE3 any further. Instead, Nunchi and Kia Sam Paul were convicted for the crimes charged based on the other modes of liability. The co-prosecutor's appeal raises, first of all, a question as to its admissibility. With their appeal, the co-prosecutors do not seek a change to the dispositive part of the trial judgment, as they do not allege any error that would invalidate it. Tôi giang nạc đói, sắp đến nhà bán lực 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 for admissibility of appeals, well established in the international uh, procedural rules and operates independently from et, uh, ordinary review of areas of law under Internal Rule 104. The co-prosecutors note that Internal Rule 1053 refers to an alleged error in validating the decision, but not the judgment. The co-prosecutors also refer to jurisprudence of the ad hoc tribunals, which in their submission supports their position. The co-prosecutors aver that the Supreme Court Chamber is the apex judicial body of the ECCC and should have the opportunity to address compelling issues of law, even if they would not affect the ultimate judgment noting that the ECCC si agreement and the ECCC uh, law do not provide interlocutory appeals as foreseen under Cambodian law. Finally, they uh, invoke what, what they described as compelling considerations of international public policy in support of a review by the Supreme Court Chamber. As to the substance of the appeal, the co-prosecutors submit that the trial chamber heard when it found that JCE3 did not fall part of customary international law at the time of the crimes and therefore was inapplicable in ECCC proceedings. They submit in particular that post-World War II case law indicates that this form of liability was firmly entrenched in customary law and that the pre-trial chamber's analysis of the case law was tainted by error. The co-prosecutor requests that the Supreme Court chamber correct this error by declaring that JCE3 is indeed applicable in the proceedings before the ECCC. Thank you, Mr. President. Chuyển tỏ thông chuyên hạ phía nhà thư xã nạ. I'd like now to hand the floor to the co-prosecutors to make their submission. Je vais maintenant passer la parole au co-procureur qui vont faire. Thank you, Mr. President, and your honors. Qui vont présenter leur conclusion. I think it would make sense to begin my presentation by answering the question that you asked relative to our appeal on this section, question five, which states, which asks whether the criminal responsibility based on this extended form of drug criminal enterprise would include only crimes that the perpetrator actually foresaw or also those that were merely foreseeable. 
qui était tout simplement prévisible. Je répondrai en citant la jurisprudence existante sur la forme élargie de l'entreprise criminelle commune. L'un des cas où cette forme a été utilisée, c'est dans l'arrêt Stockage, paragraphe 65. The appeals chamber of the ICTY held that the accused can be found to have third category JC liability if he intended to further the common purpose of the joint criminal enterprise, and the crime was a natural and foreseeable consequence of that common purpose. In other words, liability attaches. If under the circumstances of the case, first, it was foreseeable that such a crime might be perpetrated by one or other members of the group. And second, the accused willingly took that risk. The crime must be shown to have been foreseeable to the accused in particular. And the Stockage appeal judgment cited Kavachka and Tadic. We Donc, agree with that. In Kavachka, paragraph 86 of the appeal judgment, Kvoka, they held that 86, what is natural and foreseeable uh, to one person, participating in, in this case, in their case, a systematic joint criminal enterprise, might not be natural and foreseeable to another, depending on the information available to them. In the Tadic appeal judgment, at paragraph 220, talking about the third form of joint criminal enterprise, they held that what is required is a state of mind in which a person, although he did not intend to bring about a certain result, was aware that the actions of the group were most likely to lead to that result, but nevertheless willingly took that risk. In other words, the so-called dolus eventualis is required. Le dolus eventualis, tel qu'on l'appelle, est ici requis. In Karadzic, there was litigation before that trial began. I mentioned this yesterday about what the third form of joint criminal enterprise exactly how it should be defined. In the trial chamber decision, 28 April 2009, again they they mentioned that in determining what an accused foresaw. It might be relevant to take into account what was foreseeable to any reasonable person in his position. That, I think, summarizes what our view is. This is JC3. It's a form of dolus eventualis, in that it holds that when someone joins a group with a common purpose, intending to commit crimes, within the jurisdiction of the court, crime, la to the extent tribunal. that there are other possible crimes that their co-participants could commit où il y a d'autres crimes possibles que les co-auteurs peuvent commettre et qui sont prévisibles pour l'accusé. L'accusé a néanmoins accepté le risque et décidé de, de continuer de participer à cette entreprise. Dans ce cas, il doit pouvoir être tenu responsable. Dans euh, l'arrêt Karadzic, JC3 où la défense conteste requiere une probabilité as opposed to a mere possibility. In paragraph 8, the appeals chamber held that after reviewing jurisprudence, they say this convincingly demonstrates that JC3 mens rea does not require a probability that a crime would be committed. It is, however, worth noting that the term possibility standard is not satisfied by implausibly remote scenarios. Plotted on a spectrum of likelihood, the JC3 mens rea standard does not require an understanding that a deviatory crime would probably be committed. It does, however, require that the possibility that a crime would be committed is sufficiently substantial 
Toutefois, il faudrait, que la possibilité de, il faudrait une possibilité que le crime soit commis et cette possibilité so soit suffisamment réelle exactly et prévisible pour l'accuser. Euh, C'est ce que nous sommes en train d'avancer. Euh, Qu'en 1975, Of the ad hoc tribunals le, dé, le droit international coutumier et la jurisprudence de tribunal adoptent ont tout simplement euh, défini davantage les éléments au bénéfice de l'accusé pour lui faire comprendre euh, les éléments constitutifs de la mens rea et de l'actus reus. An additional qualification. I think Je pense qu'on pourrait ajouter une nouvelle qualification qui est implicite dans cette jurisprudence, qui est celle de savoir que, criminal, qui est que le but commun, le projet commun, doit accroître le risque de la commission de, de ces crimes probables. Je vais donner des exemples concrets exactly why this is an issue of importance de la raison pour laquelle c'est une question importante And the defense differ. And the defense, et en quoi les positions uh, du procureur et de la défense can correct me if I'm euh, wrong sont divergentes. About their position. La, la défense ne peut pas me, me corriger si je me trompe sur leur position. Non, si des, des personnes crime, euh, décident de commettre intentionnellement un crime, par exemple, par exemple euh, déporter de force des personnes ou persécuter un groupe de personnes, torturer des personnes, donner des ordres, de faire des plans à l'effet de tuer des personnes, et que ce plan est une conséquence prévisible, alors il devrait être tenu pour responsable. La défense ne sera que ce n'était pas son intention et ne devrait donc pas être tenu responsable. Un autre exemple concret, nous savons que court, dans les faits de la cause, dans, There were orders to groups to persecute, en groups of individuals euh, il y a eu des ordres de uh, persécuter un to groupe kill. de personnes, so de les example, torturer ou de les tuer. In, uh, Many of the German cases, exemple, even in the Eisen group, and cases where groups of Eisen, Jews Eisen and other Gruppen, minorities were targeted uh, for les minorités killings. Ciblés, ou dans There also allemandes. were laws and instructions that soldiers, Germans, could not have sex with Jews. Selon lesquels, euh, and yet the evidence, the historical evidence, is that many rapes occurred et, uh, when groups of soldiers were given women to go take away and execute. Et de militaires avaient reçu l'ordre d'amener des femmes pour les tuer. Et so nous avons exemple, eu le fait, ago, dans les circonstances de l'espèce, au Kamba, au Cambodge, par exemple, Ahmed Safia, un témoin, il y a deux semaines, a témoigné dans ce prétoire et a dit comment est-ce qu'un groupe de femmes et de filles avait été amené dans une maison pour les tuer. Et tous ceux qui ont été admis ont été identifiés comme des chambres ou ont été mis en dehors. Et tous ceux qui ont été mis en dehors ont été mis en dehors et qui euh, s'identifiait comme les chambres étaient euh, amenés euh, dans les forces et étaient exécutées. Elle a dit avoir entendu We certains d'entre elles dire, s'il vous plaît, ne me violez pas. Nous savons que les témoignages faisant état de leurs exécutions, probablement pour des raisons de sauver les clothing, les victimes ont été ordonnées de disrobe avant leur exécution. Now, is it foreseeable when you give militia members, including teenage boys, donc nous avons euh, des membres de Every milice to enslave groups, to sometimes to torture euh, in detention étaient victimes women, de or non, qui, à qui on donnait des ordres de torturer in des femmes en détention even if they're told that the Khmer Rouge policy is against rape même that si they will in fact sexually assault them. Euh, we say de, absolutely in the circumstances viol, And that will be, of course, a matter for whatever trial chamber hears any such case to determine. But we will say that it's certainly possible where a trial chamber finds that that's a possible consequence foreseeable to an accused. In our submission, the law should hold them responsible. It's a foreseeable consequence of the criminal plan that they have where they have willingly taken that risk. Ils avaient adopté et ils avaient délibérément pris ce risque. And as I said, we believe that this is rooted, as our appeal brief points out, in the jurisprudence going back to the Second World War. If you look at the plannings for the Nuremberg, particularly the Nuremberg Tribunal, 
there was a UN War Crimes Commission formed and to meet in 1983 with the purpose of advising states on the law to be applied in any subsequent trials. In their report of March 1945, and this is a Authority 36 that we provided for the appeal hearings, they had examined English, uh, Soviet, French, and the Czechoslovakian systems of criminal law. And they pointed out it is a common principle to all four systems of law, of law that if, quote, several persons act together in pursuance of a common intent, every act done in furtherance of it by any one of them is in law done by all. In their report on holding members of the German government responsible, they said such individuals, quote, must be held responsible like members of a group of wrongdoers <coughs> for all criminal acts according to the principle that every act done in furtherance of the criminal purpose by any one of them is in law done by all. And if we look at the statutes that were then established for the Nuremberg and the Tokyo tribunals, we see again there is the intent to hold all of those that play a significant role in a criminal plan responsible for all the actions of the members of the group. The Nuremberg Charter and the Tokyo Charter, I believe, have identical language. Quote, leaders, organizers, instigators, and accomplices participating in the formulation or execution of a common plan or conspiracy to commit any of the foregoing crimes are responsible for all acts performed by any persons in execution of such plan. Control Council Law Number 10, which was subsequently set up to try those slightly smaller fish after the Nuremberg Tribunal finished, provided that any person is deemed to have committed a crime who, quote, was connected with plans or enterprises involving its commission. What we are now advocating is adopting the jurisprudence that's been developed, articulated, uh, articulating this principle since 19, since the ICTY began, since Tadic, which actually only has further defined it to the benefit of the accused by making it clear what mens rea is required. They must actually foresee the crime and accept the risk, and their contribution has to be a substantial contribution to the criminal enterprise. It's consistent with how the Control Council Law 10 uh, judge advocate in the Martin Weiss case described the common design. He said all who join in such common design to commit an unlawful act must take responsibility for all the consequences of the execution of the act if done in furtherance of the plan, although not specifically contemplated by the parties or even if forbidden by the defendant, or although the actual perpetrator is not identified. And I know no, counsel has um, has question the value to be placed on Je control council law number 10 cases. This has been reviewed and challenged by other parties in other cases, and the law is quite clear. One case is Ademovic, appeal judgment. Uh, this is actually from Cassese's dissenting opinion. He says control council number 10 can be regarded as an international agreement among the four occupying powers. The actions of the courts established or acting under that law acquires an international relevance. So in the cases that we've cited, just broadly, what they often show is that, Donc, for example, in cases where citer, groups of prisoners were taken with a common plan where it's clear that individuals in the group clair, agreed to their mistreatment 
uh, under the Geneva Conventions, you can't use prisoners for propaganda purposes, and you certainly cannot assault them. And if, in that mistreatment, they were subsequently killed, all were held responsible for the killing when the trial chambers found that that was a foreseeable result of the criminal plan. And I think another very good example cited in our brief in Clerk involves the actual judgment of the IMT et qui implique and le jugement how même it was applied to those who were involved in the slave labor program, particularly Sokol and Spear. And what the case seems to hold clearly to us is that those who were involved in procuring individuals as slave labor, even if they didn't want them to be further mistreated, assaulted, or killed, or starved, they were held responsible for it as a foreseeable result of that criminal plan. And that they had continued to participate in that plan while accepting that risk. Now, the defense makes a point, um, in both defense teams in their briefs, that often in both the Control Council Law No. 10 and in the IMT judgment, Du Conseil de contrôle numéro the accused are found guilty of broad categories, basically war crimes or crimes against humanity, without the courts often articulating exactly which of the crimes it is that they are convicting the defendant for, which of the abuses. Um, we think that's just a further example that the law at that time was that when you were participating in the criminal plan, you were held responsible for all of the consequences. The courts didn't feel a need to identify particular crimes, individual crimes that the person was responsible for. But many of the decisions make it absolutely clear that they were, in fact, finding the people guilty of the unintended but foreseeable crime. So, for example, in Eisengruppen, they made it clear that murder was the principal charge in that case. And they held people like Poole responsible, even if they had indicated that they were opposed to mistreatments of Jews or burning down some synagogues. They were still convicted of the war crimes and crimes against humanity that where the principal charge was murder. Similarly, for Speer and Sokol, if they were not being held responsible for these abuses of the slave labor program, there would have been no reason for the court to have mentioned the fact that they said that they were against it, but they knew it was happening. So by indicating that, it's clearly clear that the courts were extending their liability for crimes that were foreseeable to them. Now, I just want to briefly mention the logic of the appeal chamber and pretrial chamber, the, sorry, pretrial chamber and trial chamber. The pretrial chamber found that, that the joint criminal enterprise could be severed. We think you have to take that principle as a whole, but they said severed and that the third form, this extended form, was not part of customary international law, and that to apply it to the accused would violate the legality principle, specifically the nulli crimen sin lege, that you cannot punish a person for a crime without law. But if you look at that principle, it's something that's absolutely fundamental that everyone in this audience could understand. It's the basic principle of fairness, that if something, if your conduct at the time, there's no reason for you to know if there's anything wrong with it, there's no reason for you to know it's illegal. You cannot later pass a law and say, oh, now uh, we've decided that your conduct is illegal and we're going to punish you for it. But it's focused on the conduct. 
Il s'agit de se concentrer sur la conduite. Quelle est la différence entre la troisième forme élargie et les deux premières formes entre well, les deux formes La deuxième est plus ambiguë encore parce que la deuxième forme inclut également les résultats prévisibles. Une personne fait partie d'un système de mauvais traitement systématique et sait que les crimes ont lieu et 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 les crimes But in all of these, what's necessary for the third form of joint criminal enterprise and the first is that a person has the intent to commit a crime within the jurisdiction of this tribunal. And that they make an intentional and significant contribution to the joint criminal enterprise. So there's no way that this principle of protecting innocent conduct can be said to be violated when you say, well, uh, yes, I knew that deporting millions of people from a city was was going was against international law, but I didn't intend for them to be killed or raped. And that is not innocent conduct. That's clear. The principle of nulle crimen sin lege cannot be violated because this is clearly conduct that has been made illegal. The person has both an unlawful mens rea, a guilty mens rea a culpable mens rea and has made an action, a significant contribution to the joint criminal enterprise. So in our view, it does not make any sense to apply that principle of nulle crimen sin lege to then excuse those who have committed acts, intentional acts, violating crimes against humanity or war crimes and say, well, we're only going to hold you responsible for the crimes you intended and we could excuse you from those that you could foresee and willingly accepted the risk would occur. That, that violates, in our view, the fundamental principles of justice and the purpose of the Nulli Crimin Law, which is that justice be served. So thank you, Your Honours. President, thank you. So now it is a good time for lunch. Nous allons maintenant nous interrompre pour la pause déjeuner. The hearing will, the chamber will resume the hearing at 1:30 p.m. Security personnel are instructed to bring the accused to the waiting room and have him returned into the courtroom before 13:30. The court is now in recess. La séance est levée.